what you guys got another video here for you now in the other videos I showed you this Dell Vostro 270 s and in this video we're going to be taking it out of this little tiny case and we're going to transfer everything over to a larger case which will give this uh, PC another lease of life so as you can see this is a small form factor PC and it restricts you quite a bit it's got an i5 third gen processor in here 8 gigs of RAM and of course what we're going to do is put in here a 1660 super and make it a much more better experience so here we have the actual PC itself we're going to take everything out and strip this down and we'll get it into a new case now these are proprietary parts in a lot of these Dell systems and HP and Lenovo's and also Fujitsu's if you are buying these to um, take out and put into another case then you have to bear in mind that there is a lot of proprietary parts so watch some of my other videos in the series of this uh, Dell Vostro and I'll show you all about how to upgrade or even how to take all of this stuff out and put it into another system and get it working so you can see here I've already removed uh, the DVD ROM drive and the hard drive caddy here which is uh, screwed in by a couple of screws so I've just removed those this is the front panel here this just pops off so I've just pulled these off now if you are going to be doing this type of thing just make sure you try and get this as cheap as possible because it won't be worth doing if you are paying hundred pounds I think I see someone in the comments section paying hundred pounds for an i3 uh, second gen which is way too much and it won't make it worth doing so I'm just going to remove the memory. It's got 8 gigs of memory, and that's um, more than normal. Sometimes you only get uh, 4 gigs of memory in here, but we have got 8 gigs on this machine. I did try to upgrade the memory, but it wasn't playing well with the memory that I upgraded it to, so I just put the old stuff back in. I'll look at that another day. So I'm going to disconnect all of the cables on the motherboard here, pull out all the power cables. And uh, the good thing about this motherboard is the power supply doesn't need an adapter cable here uh, which means we can just plug in a normal power supply 24 pin connector in here without having an adapter cable which is a plus means you don't have to go and buy one of those so to get to these antennas I'm gonna have to uh, remove the heatsink to get to those because I can't get my fat fingers around those little tiny screws there so let me just go ahead and undo uh, the heatsink here now these are on a funny angle and uh, just remove the four spring loaded screws here this will then release the heatsink from the motherboard now if you want to change uh, the heatsink you're going to have to do some uh, different things with the cable so we're just going to remove those we'll probably leave the stock cooler on here because it's a pretty old machine now you can see how dry that compound is look at the compound on there it's completely dry and removed and that's probably why uh, the uh, thermals were really high on this when I powered it on it was like 60 Celsius so once we get all this cleaned up I'll put some fresh compound on there and we should be good to go so now I can get access to these little wire uh, antennas here this is a Wi-Fi card you can reuse this if you wish I'm going to just leave this off I don't need Wi-Fi on this system but if you do you're just going to have to rip all the cable out and the little antenna at the end and then reroute that in your new case if that's what you want to do so I'm just going to unplug these now probably won't use these SATA cables because they're too small they're designed for this small form factor so I'll probably use uh, some new SATA cables which I have lying around so this little tiny one here I'm just going to remove this from the actual machine itself that's a tiny little cable there we go and I'm just going to remove the blue one as well and we've got some USB cables to remove and we should be able to get access to the motherboard screws and then remove it now this is one of the more easier versions of Dell's to uh, swap out into another case I found uh, some of the other ones like the Dell Optiplex uh, 7010 and stuff like that you have to go through a bunch of different things to get it to work sensors and loads of other problems like that you will have you do get the odd sensor problem on here but it's pretty straightforward and easy to sort out so I'm just going to quickly remove these screws here there should be six of them on this board now this board is not quite a micro ATX board and not quite 
a 90x board it's sort of in between they've taken a little bit off which still is okay because it should still fit in a micro ATX case so that's what I'll show you a little bit later on it's going to remove this here and uh, we should be good to go now keep all the screws because you can reuse these on uh, general standoffs they will work on those as well so let's get this undone I don't think we need anything else here I'm just going to remove this last screw here now I suppose really if you wanted to you could discard uh, this case or you can keep it and sell it if you wanted to uh, there's you're not going to get much for it to be honest it's just scrap the power supply is probably sellable but there's tons of them on eBay so you're probably not going to get much uh, for it to be honest it's just a bit of a wasted time people do sell some rubbish on eBay they seem to sell just about anything and if you're one of those people by all means go ahead and do it but I'll be uh, tipping this straight into uh, the recycle so I'm just going to remove this and there we go there is your cheap budget board now they've done just about everything they can to produce a board cheap enough to make it a viable project for them to make money on this so that's why everything is stripped out and it's to stop you from uh, using uh, this board in another case but you can do it so I don't really need any of this stuff anymore because we're going to be uh, you know using a brand new case with another power supply I will need the IO shield now watch out when you buy some of these uh, builds from Dell and HP because sometimes these are fixed to the case and you can't release them some of them are held in with just some little metal lugs and you can bend those back and try to release the plate uh, but it won't sit very well inside there so now we need to remove the hard drive now if you're going to use the CD-ROM drive you can do I'm not going to be using it so I'm just going to remove uh, the hard drive from this little cage here and uh, we can then utilize that now that's a one terabyte drive so again it's uh, worth keeping for storage of games and stuff like that because we are converting this into a gaming system but again you can use it for general purpose use if you want to and get yourself a bit more space I find once we upgrade the power supply and things like that it's going to make this PC a little bit more usable because obviously you'll be able to put more hard drives in uh, solid state drives and all that sort of good stuff so let's uh, remove this last screw here and we can move on to the next uh, phase is and that's getting the uh, case out and getting ready for the installation this is pretty straightforward stuff again it's just like building a, a PC so there we go we've got now our hard drive now again you want to use this as storage really and not as your main boot drive because these are pretty slow now another thing about used hard drives you never know where they've been and what's been stored on them so when you purchase old hard drives or used hard drives uh, from eBay and places like that you just got to be really really careful of what's actually been stored on those drives again let's have a look here at all the parts that we're going to be needing for our transfer we've got our cables We've got our RAM, our drive, our heatsink, our IO shield, and also our motherboard and some screws. And that's what we've basically got here. So this is everything we've salvaged from that PC. It's got a Wi-Fi card here. And uh, again, you can use that Wi-Fi card if you wish. I'm not going to be using it, but if you want to, you can do. Again, but this is all the stuff that we've managed to pull out of that system. I will clean up all the thermal paste and get this ready for the installation in our new case. So the case that I've chosen here is one that I had lying around uh, which was brand new I bought it and never ever got around to using it I was going to put a build in here when these were really popular and again it just sat in the cupboard and I never really used it so I'm going to be utilizing this for this build It's a little bit probably overkill for what I need here but again I'm trying to keep the cost down and that's exactly what you should be doing try to keep the cost down as low as possible and used used parts whenever possible so I'm just going to quickly remove the side panel here now I'd like to remove all of the panels and this does have a top panel and two side panels and you can put this any um, combination you like you can put this perspex side panel on top if you want to and the mesh bit on the side it's entirely up to you how you have yours set out if you buy this case now this case I do like this case quite a bit it's quite a nice case to build in and I'd like to do a new build in one of these types of cases but they're getting a bit older these cases nowadays and there's some really decent ones out on the market 
Uh, but you've got these little two and a half inch um, caddies on the side here, which you can remove with screws if you want to remove those. So I'm just going to remove this top panel as well. So we've got all of the access to the top and the side. Now this is not the standard conventional uh, case, as you can see it's got some unique features like being able to rotate these panels any side you like here. And again there's no RGB in here and there's also um, some restrictions that we're going to have to overcome with this uh, build. Now you can remove these little rails here, these are for your radiator. You can mount radiators on these as well if you wanted to, but I'm just going to leave those in. And I'm just going to remove this other side panel here. And I'll show you all the steps how to get around certain things like uh, no fan headers on the board. There's only one which goes to the CPU um, header on the board, but we'll show you a way to get around that so we can uh, make sure we get some fans in here. We can even add a little bit of uh, RGB to it if we wanted to. And I'll show you that as well. OK, so let's remove this package of screws and cables and stuff like that. That comes with every case that you buy. And you can use these to mount all your motherboard and everything else inside here. So there's your little kit here and it comes with your manual. And I do like thermal tape cases. They are pretty affordable and uh, they do some really nice, unique design cases. So there we are, there we've got our cables here. These are the fr uh, front umbilical cord cables which we can use for USB 3.0 and the other cables which are for your motherboard and stuff like that. You can see audio cable there and there's a USB 3.0. Now remember this doesn't have this pin layout on the board but I'll show you a way to get around that so we can utilize that as well. And we've also got a fan header here which is for the board but we don't have one of those and I'll show you how to get around that as well so we can get the fans all working on here and we also have our and the front panel connectors here okay so let's get our IO shield in first that's the first thing that we're going to want to do here so we're just going to push this in as you can see these are pretty straightforward stuff you just click these into place and um, when you're buying used boards on eBay and places like that make sure it does have the IO shield uh, with it included. A lot of these sellers sometimes sell these uh, without the IO shield which can be a bit of a pain. Also we can leave these runners in but you can remove them but I'm just going to uh, get around these. Now the standoffs here are already on the case and uh, you don't want to be screwing standoffs as you would normally do in a case because this would make it too high. So don't go ahead and start screwing these in like this otherwise you'll run into problems. Okay. So you don't need standoffs uh, for this type of case. It's already got the little risers there, which we can use. OK, so let's uh, move on and install the motherboard. And this is a pretty simple. Just slot this into the IO shield here and just give it a little bit of a push. Make sure those little grounding straps are sitting on top. And then there we go. And now we can start to screw these down so just get your screws and screw the motherboard down there's six screws here now you'll notice here that the micro atx would just come down a little bit further there but it's okay all the screw holes line up it's not going to cause any problems so let's go ahead and get this uh, screwed in and get it tightened down now you can use mechanical screwdrivers or uh, hand screwdriver whatever floats your boat really but you can see already that it's give us a lot more scope for this build because now we can get full access to the um, PCI Express slot for the card here which means we can have bigger graphics cards in here now thing to watch out for is that the power for those PCI Express slots sometimes they're only 35 watts and you may run into power problems when you're using uh, certain types of graphics cards you'll get stuttering and uh, things like that because it's not enough power delivery through there so just be very careful and normally do your research to make sure that someone else is actually used a graphics card that you want to use in a particular type of build so if it's a say a Dell Optiplex 7010 or a Dell Vostro just make sure that you're watching someone else's video to see if they're having any problems playing games or anything like that with certain types of cards okay so now that's uh, all screwed in 
let's take a look and see what it looks like so they've got the motherboard in now and we can take a look at how it looks it doesn't look too bad as you can see there it's green but it doesn't look too bad it uh, fits in there nicely you can see this this is the micro ATX part here but it's right on the screw so it's uh, perfectly fine just be very very careful not to put too much pressure on that graphics card area there because there's no screw right to the edge and you don't want to be uh, cracking the board or breaking a trace or anything like that so I'm just going to clean up the compound here with an alcohol wipe just remove all of the compound from here and we'll clean this up and we'll add some new thermal grease on here now I also want to do the cooler as well because we're using the stock cooler so I just want to make sure that we get that nice and clean so let's get the stock cooler and give that a bit of a clean up as well there we go give that a bit of a clean up there and again this is baked on nice and dry so you really want to get all of that off and get a nice clean finish so you can see here we're done let's move on to the next step here so what I'm going to do here is just going to remove these uh, little hard drive bays here these are for your two and a half inch here I don't need these inside here so I'm just going to remove those now you can line them up here and put them in down there if you wish I'm just going to remove these and put our power supply in as well so we're using a 500 watt power supply here this is something I have bought a while ago for a project and uh, never got around to using it you can see a bit of dust flying around off of it but it's okay just going to squeeze this in down this end here there we go and uh, again I'm just going to slide that in and get this screwed up now this is a non-modular power supply so you want to try and get one of those ones with the basement or the shroud to hide all the cables that will look even better but we don't have that sort of benefit in this case but it should be okay so I'm going to quickly screw down uh, the power supply and uh, screwing these in is not the same as, as it would be on another case because the screw holes are in a slightly different place here but I'm just going to quickly screw these into the place where they should be and there we go that's tight and now we can move on to the next step so I'm just going to make sure these are tightened up there we go they are tight so they move on to the next stage here and that's uh, trying to get the cooler on so I'm going to put some uh, compound on here first you can apply yours how you like whether you want to smooth it out with your finger or whether you just want to leave it as a little blob in the middle or a line whatever you want to use it doesn't really matter just use whatever thermal paste you want you can see there's a blob there and I'll be just leaving it as it is and then just squidging that down with a cooler simple as that so let's go ahead and get the cooler and then we can then put the cooler on now this goes at a slight angle I'm putting it on straight here at first because I'm thinking it's a standard PC and forgetting that they go in at a slight angle so yeah just make sure you got that at the right angle and that should be okay and then we can now screw this down now these are spring loaded screws so I'm just going to push this down and get this tightened round each corner so I normally start off one corner and then I go to the opposite corner and then keep moving round until it's tight next up we're going to use our USB 3.0 converter cable so we can get our uh, USB working now these have the 9 pin USB headers on the board so we need to convert those so we can use our USB 3.0 connector on the front panel connection there so make sure we get that in now again these are the sort of compromises you're going to have to make when you are using something like a Dell Optiplex or Dell Vostro or any sort of Dell uh, motherboard because they do some quirky stuff with their builds uh, the good thing about the power supply is it, you can use a standard power supply you don't need a converter cable and again I just need to get this cable through here so I'm just going to pull a bunch of these out on this side and then we can get this plugged in so this as you can see here has got a little connector here and I just have to push that into make sure there's a little lug there marry those up and push them in be a bit careful with these because the pins can get bent because we're pushing male into female and that should be good there we go that's in so that's that problem solved so we didn't have to worry about the power supply we've got a USB sorted out 
Now again, if I wanted to use uh, more SATA ports, I would be able to use that um, card that I was talking about in my previous video, but we don't have to use that because I've got two SATA ports here and I'm just gonna use one for the um, hard drive and one for the, SAT, uh, one for the SATA SSD drive, so that's fine. Let's get this uh, memory installed on the system here. So I'm just gonna quickly install this. Now again, I bought this uh, on eBay, and of course one of these uh, sticks was duff on arrival, so, and I can't send it back because I've had it a few months now. I never used it, but it just goes to show you, on eBay, it's a lottery whether you get good stuff and bad stuff. Most of it's all old junk, and what happens is you end up having to send stuff back. It's a, it's a nightmare, it really is. It's people selling old tat for overinflated prices, and again, I don't have much luck on eBay to be honest. So I've got the front panel connectors to do here for the power button. Now these can be a little bit quirky depending on what version of Dell you're running. On this one it's pretty easy so I'm just going to do the audio one first and then I'll do the front panel connectors but fortunately for this build they use standard pins and it's very easy to slip the, the proper cables onto them with no problems at all. The, some of the Dell machines use smaller pins, slightly smaller pins, and it's very hard to get a connection on there. And you can have to use jumpers to uh, fill in the blanks, otherwise you'll get a load of beep codes and error codes coming up on the screen. I've talked about this and covered this in my previous video. If you want to go and watch that video, I'll leave the link in the video description, or you'll see a card up the top of the video to click on it. Watch that video, and i explain all about that in that video. So we've got the... Uh, connectors on here just need to get the audio connector on and it's a standard audio connector so that should be easy enough to do okay so that's uh, now got the audio cable in and once we got that in we can then take a look at uh, the three pin fan header on the board there's only one which is for the CPU cooler and we're going to need to utilize that power for our fans as well and we can use that with a splitter now some people might be uh, asking the question, can you do that? Yes, you can. You can still use the 12 volt pin layout on there and use the splitter as long as you're not going over the top and loading it up with loads and loads and loads of fans. We've only got one fan at the front here and we've got our CPU uh, cooler there as well. So that's what we're gonna do. So what we're gonna do here is I've got the three pin fan for the front to get power to. So I'm just going to use a little splitter here that gives me some options for, for up to five fans and well four fans and one CPU cooler. And you can get these for around about two or three pounds, four pounds on Amazon. They're pretty useful to have, especially if you're doing a lot of these Dells. So let me just quickly uh, pull that out and I'll show you what it looks like. Just unplugging it here. There we go. That's it there. So you can see it's got one CPU on it and it's also got four fans. So I'm just going to quickly plug in the connector onto the board here where the heatsink goes. And then we can plug in our heatsink cable into there. So you can see more compromises again. This is what I was on about in the first video. I was just talking about compromises and you want to put this one into the CPU one here and uh, you should be good to go from there. So let's get uh, the front panel connector done for the power button, LED light, hard drive, LED light, and also reset button, all that sort of good stuff. So we're just gonna go ahead and get these in. Now, if you wanna know what the pin layout is for this board, it's not a standard pin layout, so you will need to look online unless you know how to test the board to find where the power button is. You can use a little screwdriver and tap it on there until you get the power the PC to boot up and then you'll know that's the power connection right there. But it's pretty straightforward stuff, um, but there's plenty of uh, diagrams online to show you which pin layouts go where. Now some of these are a little bit more finicky. You will need to use jumpers and stuff like that to blank out some of the other ones, otherwise you'll start getting error codes on the screen. So just bear that in mind when you're using these Dell uh, machine motherboards because uh, 
The problem is with them, uh, they, some of them need sensors left on, then you need cables to cut the cable off. Otherwise, you're going to end up with loads and loads of problems. The good news is with the Dell Vostros, uh, on this model, uh, you don't need to worry about any of that stuff. You're not going to have a big problem. So that's a good thing. So I'm just going to get these wired up and we'll move on to the next step. OK, so we've got that all sorted out. So let's get our our drive installed. So I'm just going to quickly put the R drive in and also the solid state drive and get these uh, slotted in. So these are just pretty much standard stuff. Just slot these in like so. Plug your cables in and plug them into the motherboard. Very simple and easy to do. I've just got the cables plugged in here to save a bit of time. Just plug those in and then we need to put the SATA cable into the motherboard. Very simple. Now I'll worry about all the cables at the end of it. I'll do all the cable management at the end. I'm not going to bore you with that part. OK, so I've got the original hard drive plugged in now. And uh, what I'm going to do is power it on. We're going to do the power on test here. Make sure that we get in post and we get in the uh, BIOS. And I want to make sure that we're going to be booting up to the desktop. Now, this is booting off of the mechanical drive here. We haven't put the solid state drive in yet. I just want to make sure to see whether this is working OK. So we've got the BIOS screen up here, as you can see here. So everything is good. We've got it working and the power button's working. We're getting all that working. So that's good. And all we need to do here now is I just want to do a quick test uh, to boot to the uh, desktop to see how slow that is. You can see all the fans spinning up. They're not having any problems at all. So we've got our front fan spinning. So everything's working OK. I'll tidy all those cables up uh, near the end. OK, so what I want to do now is boot up to our desktop on our mechanical drive just to show you how slow these old systems are on a mechanical drive setup. So it's got the original mechanical drive in here and uh, we're just going to boot up. It's got Windows installed and I just want to quickly boot up to the desktop to show you how slow it is. So this is what you're dealing with with these old systems. Now this is an old Gen 3 i5 processor and uh, it's booting up now as you can see. We're just going to wait till it gets to the desktop. And then what we just will do is it will give us an idea of how slow this is compared to how fast it will be when we put our solid state drive on here. So we're just letting this go ahead and do a boot test. And you can see how slow that is. It's taking forever. And this is the thing with these old mechanical drives. They're not the fastest. And with this old computer, you can see how slow that is. And everything's running OK. So there you go. It's still loading up to the desktop. It's taking forever. Now this is to me that will be unusable. Uh, I couldn't use a PC this slow. Now once you get into the desktop, we'll uh, get on with the build and we'll change out that drive to a solid state drive, and then we can test it again. You still see it's still loading, and this was a fresh install of Windows 10 Pro on this machine here. It's still loading. Wow. Yeah. There you go. And that's foot not fully loaded yet, but you can see it's at the desktop there. So we'll call that done, which was a massive slow boot up time. So I'm going to be putting a solid state drive in here. We're going to go for the PMY 240 gigabyte solid state drive. This is where we'll install our Windows operating system on. I'll get that installed on the system, get Windows on it, and then what we can do is do a test with that one as well. I want to get a graphics card in here as well. I want to get a 1660 Super in here, and we can then uh, do some testing. Okay, so we're going to get our graphics card installed on the system now. So I've got the solid state drive in, and we've gone for this uh, 1660 Super from Gigabyte. Now, of course, if you are doing this yourself, you want to try to get yourself a cheap uh, graphics card that's good enough to play the games you want to play and keep that cost down. If you've got money to burn and you just want to buy a better graphics card, by all means, go ahead and do so. So let's get the graphics card installed. So we'll just get this pushed in the slot. Remember not to push too hard on that slot because there's not much protection on there. So. That's in now. So all we need to do is screw that in 
and get some power to our card. Now 500 watts power supply should be plenty for this particular card. And again, you could rotate this case exactly how you want it. So you can have it up the other way. So it's the standard uh, flat way with the power button and all that sort of stuff up the top. It's entirely up to you how you have yours set. I'm just going to leave this as is this way. I prefer it that way. And, uh, let's get the uh, power cable in there now and then we should be good to go. So let's put off the protective covering on the Perspex here so you can have a look. Now I've also added a bit of RGB at the end and I'll show you that what that looks like just in case for you people that wanted to add a bit of RGB in you can do. And again, that's the finished result. I can do a bit more cable management at a later date, but that looks pretty good if you ask me for a, an i5 third gen Dell machine. We've put it into a case here. We're gonna do a quick boot test here just to show you what it looks like. So we've got the Dell post screen here and we'll see how quick that gets to the desktop compared to that mechanical drive and see how fast that is. And we're already at the splash screen here, as you can see. And we're just gonna be at the desktop anytime soon. There we go. Not too bad, just needs the graphics drivers installed on there as well. So you can see a much bigger improvement compared to the mechanical drive. And this little Y5 has had a new lease of life with that graphics card and also it will do once I get the 16 gigs of memory in there. And uh, not too bad for a Dell Vostro 270S, which was a small form factor uh, system. So it's not too bad. So I'll add a bit of RGB in here so you can see. I'm just running um, the Heaven benchmark here. And you can see the results on the screen. Not too bad for an old system like this. Now again, if you want to... Uh, play games you will see benchmarks and stuff like that i will do that in a separate video or do that after this one so the next video in this series will be uh, benchmarking and also gameplay so you can see um, basically how good it is at gaming in the modern day of 2020 you have added a bit of rgb here now so you can see a little bit of rgb if that's what you want to add to your build you can add some rgb to it some rgb strips let me just show you which RGB strips I used so you can see them. And uh, I'll just grab all of these. These are called the multicolor LED strips and uh, they come with the remote control and they're from Ergo. Basically, I'll leave the link in the video description. It's a full kit which gives you RGB strips here for the uh, system. Pretty nice. And uh, one up the top, one at the bottom. Comes with its little SATA connector there which is ideal for this uh, type of build because obviously we don't have any uh, RGB ports on the ball, but you get a little remote control here and you can change it. So it's just got it on fading from color to color, uh, which does look quite nice on this particular type of build. So I'll show you inside as well so you can get a good idea of what it looks like inside. So you can see the final result. I did do a bit of cable management and tidy it up a little bit more. And I'm pretty sure if you want to put a bit more time and effort into it, you can do a better job than what I did because really my heart wasn't really in it as much because it's an old system and it was just a really sort of a project just to show you how you can actually uh, do this with an old uh, Dell Vostro 270 small form factor. All in all, it turned out pretty well, I think. It's not too bad for an old PC. So if you're looking to do something like this, then that's basically how you can do it. If you need a little bit of help with some cabling and also how to do certain things, you can always join our Discord server and I'll help you out over there. In the next video, I'll show you some benchmarks and stuff like that. But this is it for this one. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.